Hi, this is Dear Damsen and today I'm going to paint three sunflowers and that will be a Van Gogh painting. So let's begin. I made a canvas size on my paper that is 8 by 10 so I can easily frame it after that. And I will start with a few brushes. I have two round brushes and I have a flat one and I have a filbert which is almost like a flat with um, no corners on the top so it's a little bit round, rounded. That's the word, rounded. All right, so let's pour the paint. I start sketching gently the base, but what do we have? We have a larger background, we have the table that our base is sitting on, and then we have the base with three sunflowers and we have some greens. So I wanted to figure out what space on the sides of the base is empty. It's almost even three parts of the base is taken from this side to this side. That's almost even coming slightly down and where it ends it's almost halfway. So this is how I'm going to figure out where my base is going stretching slightly sideways. We have a curve because our object is going around. Then it lifts. I'm going to see where is my middle. Middle is somewhere right here. So that's how I'm going to start my sketching and figure out the proportions of where things are located on the canvas. And let's look. So we have one flower that is smack in the middle almost. Middle is the side middle, but it's a little bit towards our right side. So there is our sunflower that has lost the petals. And if you have had sunflowers that are will getting dried up, building you're going to see how the petals actually shrink and become tiny little, almost like a tiny little tutu on the sunflower, because sunflowers have a really nice big center. Then we have one that's a little bit over the middle part, and it's overlapping, tiny overlap, and then we have petals on this here and they're going you know that much opposite this one this circle and shrink it just gently so do you see I'm making quite a few lines because I want to figure out what is going to work then I have the petals they actually end right here and they go smaller here and then I know I can place my petals inside that second, between the first and the second circle. So that's one way how you can create something that is more even, instead of me just going without the second guide of a circle. And then we have a smaller sunflower that is on the top with a smaller center. I'm coming off a little bit of the canvas and that's okay. So my base is going to come around here and go in a little bit. We have a green leaf, a shadow, more green leaves here, a green leaf 
the lip looks dried up to me. Okay. And I have a big one. Let's go. Another one. So when I'm pl planning the composition, when I'm planning the composition, what I'm doing is real fast sketch. And then I'm starting to narrow down. Um, this looks like almost like a donut. So I got a donut right here. This one is slightly smaller. And that's when the eraser is gonna come and take away the lines that I don't want. I never expect that with one line I'm gonna sketch something and that will be it. If I do that, that's great, but if I don't, I'm gonna continue sketching and sketching until I'm happy with my proportions. This sunflower actually comes much higher. So here is what I figured out. And not compare this because the proportions of Van Gogh, this side is much longer and it comes out. So my rectangle, it's much squattier, which means I have to get in here and make everything a little bit smaller because I don't have the length of his painting. So I can do a couple of things. I'll just bring this guy lower. So that's another thing that we want to pay attention. Now we want eight by 10. So our geometry does not match his geometry. His painting is much longer. So if I have had um, eight by and adding another couple of inches, that was going to be perfect. But either I'm gonna shrink this down, but I wanna keep it in, a le in um, eight by 10 because that's a good frameable size for me. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to shrink everything, running it a little down because now we have smaller object. Table's gonna come here. I'll put this a little lower. So that is something that we want to consider what is our um, geometry versus the painting that we are doing. So if we're doing one-to-one, -one, then we're not going to have a problem. But if we are doing something that's a little bit different, my site is shorter than his comparing this side. So my height versus my length is different than his geometry. So I need to figure out how proportionately I'm going to manage this inside my shape not to come out and miss something. Now I can still leave it, but I want to bring everything in because it's not a vase with sunflowers. It's three sunflowers. That's our painting. So I'm going to take away so that is a lot of times that's that is something that can happen um, having the different proportion comparing your proportions with the artist so now I know my sunflower is gonna come way down here this one's gonna come right here so my center is right obviously in the center and I'm pushing them way below that at least this guy which was pretty much center on his. So there's my base coming here. He's still gonna have that lying leaf and another tiny little petals on this little guy. The center is facing, facing down. So we're doing a ellipse. We're not doing a circle. This one has a center. And if you've seen sunflower seeds um, or sunflowers, they always have the tiny, tiny seeds in the middle and the big seeds on the side. So you always have like a really cute center on a sunflower. And I'm talking about the ones that are not decorated, but you eat. So a lot of tiny petals. So make sure that you do your any brush strokes on that. Now I have space. I'm gonna lift this. I have a smaller sunflower, some leaves that are kind of turning and bending. 
remember I'm gonna do my second circle because that will be so much easier and then I can place my petals and if you see my petals are not really petals they're more like lines because I kind of give myself an idea where am I going and approximately what is the shape doing starting from and here so we have a leaf that it's sticking and curving away few angles and a smaller one and this is it so we shrunk everything down a little bit to the side so we can have more height so we made things a little bit smaller to compensate for the height because our geometry was not the same as his geometry so if I decide to do um, exactly the same halfway from the sides and put my base here and then place my center where his center is I'm coming off the page because then that flower is way too high or I have to just bring it closer. So since we are doing a Van go our way, our style in a way, um, taking what we can from him but making it our own, we can do things like that. We can, we can change a little bit. But most of the times we want to keep it true to or as close as possible to the original artist because that's how we are going to learn about what he was about okay now let's place our background now even though I have that aqua aqua green I will um, want to add a little bit of green or or lighter blue on my background so if I go in here and I start adding some of the green, gently wet my brush, I'm gonna get some of the blue and I'm gonna add those beautiful brush strokes. The background is so yummy. And I rather come out of my canvas than stay in and leave a little white area because if I'm putting matting on my picture, I don't want any white. Okay, so let's get a little bit of the green with our aqua. So if you see my brush strokes are Kind of disorganized they don't have direction they go on all kinds of angles um, and that's what we want I'm looking at his painting and that's what I see there is no um, direction on the brush strokes they are just going around and just pure aqua color was not going to work because I see the green, I see even some yellow in his background, I see some white, I see some blue, so adding a little bit of other colors and not keeping it pure is awesome. So there's our colder background. When it's wet and I place another color, that's when my colors blend nicely. If I am too dry, like right here on the top, I'm gonna bring that aqua together with my blue so I can have them blend much better. So I'm using a round brush and I just chose a side that was comfortable for me to just use the whole length of the brush not just the tip or yeah so this is a 12 um, size 12 brush round 12 so 
Deep with four strokes, pleasant, beautiful four strokes. I love them. So remember, I'm going outside my canvas. My line is here, and that's okay. There is that. Let's get a little, a little blue. If it gets a little too dark, what do we do? We can lighten it up a little bit with white. Go a little bit more with the aqua on top. Okay, so I'm gonna get in here closer because our leaves have spaces in between. So, do we want white to fill it in later? It's okay, it's still okay. Because there's no wrong in art doing. You are the boss of whatever you're painting. So decisions can be made on the go and decide what you want to do. So I'm noticing that one side, this side is a little bit dark on, on his painting. Um, so I'm assuming this was the lighter side. If he was seeing a little bit more light. Also, I'm not seeing he has a highlight on the base right here. Some of his paintings don't quite have that uh, pronounced highlight highlights. So it's interesting to see that here. Okay, too dark, but we don't want to freak out. We're just going to go right over it. Blend it with a little white and go for it. So, and those sunflowers. He just painted so many sunflowers. They're all over the world. Um, in Japan, in Europe, in the United States. They're beautifully done. So when you paint something, Say, well, I have painted some flowers, I'm done. Um, just think about the artists out there that have done this 10 times, 15, 20, 100 times, and perfecting the brush or perfecting what they see and what they're trying to tell us with the application of the color and everything. Yellow and blue. I know just a little more greenish here, so we're gonna go with my green. Yellow and blue. directional on the brush strokes. They were everywhere. Left, right, up, down, sideways, and it was all bad. The next part will be our table. And on the table, I'm noticing now that his brush strokes are more horizontal. So we're going to do that. And that part of the table is a really warm brown, like a reddish brown. So I'm going to do, we'll create that color. Using a little bit of magenta, a little bit of the dark brown, and really, really nice tone. So, a very beautiful brown. Now, outside, um, actually, the little umber, I'm going to just add it right here. So, a little bit of the brown. I'm going to start not cleaning my brush, so my brush is mixing and he has that line. So Van Gogh has a lot of outlines. It's just his way of expressing. Okay, so now I can just add some brush strokes to this. And I'm going to go around and I'll switch my brush. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a flat brush 
but I'm not going to use the whole side of the flat brush, I'll use the small side. Load it nicely, and then I want thinner brush strokes. And let's make some little bit more. So it's not quite a 100% mix, because I, I would love to see all the colors right on the canvas mixing. And it's going to be much better than me mixing the color perfectly and just creating one color. Okay, so let's get a little bit of light. Very important not to smooth it too much because we want to see how the brush is loaded with color and it's being deposited on where you deposit all that on your canvas. Okay, so what do I want? I want to give my base a little bit of an outline. like they are dying but I'm adding green to my brown so it has that a little bit of the hue of the green blackish not washing my brush there is this one here bit darker closer to that bent part and then we're gonna go a little bit lighter few light so I'm gonna go back into the dark brown and add a few brush strokes so I noticed I have a little bit of white that I need to fill in it's okay do it right now. Getting the aqua and just filling it in. Perfect. So this side has more green leaves. These leaves are almost blackened. So mixing colors is one of those things you're just gonna have to play around and see how colors are mixing. And Figure it out by playing. Because what I have noticed is some paints have different hues. And if somebody tells you mix red and blue and you get purple, you might not get the purple you want. So you start mixing the colors and figuring it out what works and what doesn't.
sometimes I have to lift my art just to look at it straight because if you're painting when it's laying and you're kind of 45 degrees looking at it, a lot of times things might grow a little bit more than you want to. So it's much better when you're painting with acrylics to have it right up front of your face in a way, maybe, maybe slight, slight angle, but not to be laying down. Um, now I do that so it's easy for you guys to see me painting from the front, the top and the side. Um, it's just for your purpose that if I am painting on my by myself and doing my own painting, I will have my art almost facing me. little bit of red in my green or dirty it and make it like a brownish red and I'll add a few spots of that. Mixing it, you see it right here. So I'm gonna start with this center and I'm gonna go and kind of apply small brush strokes and go in a circle. darker. I can just go around and do this. And then we're gonna go lighter orange. Much lighter orange. And I'm gonna start with lighter. Right on my brush. So again, not cleaning my brush. How little is my brush shows? They are tiny. Not going to a small brush because I want to load that brush and leave a ton of paint on my canvas. This one and adding a little bit more warmth, getting a little bit of the yellow to the mix nicely with my brown and orange. And you can always stand up and look at your painting from the top to see if it's looking right, or just pull yourself away from it just for a little few seconds or have lunch, take a break, and then come back to it and see what it tells you. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take white with some of my yellow and start my petals right here. So my base is with white. And the reason why is because white is going to cover some of that green and 
hole when I try to go with the brighter orange and yellow. So I'm adding white to it first. You can see some of my pencil marks, so it helps me to know how far am I going with, with my petals. that outline uh, that he does. So you see how I'm moving from one area to another, Le leaving something kind of to rest, dry, and then I'm going to go back to it. So I'm going to leave these flowers to dry so I can get back to them. Okay, let's do one of these. The brush strokes for the base. Again, there is brush strokes in almost every direction. Most of them are going to get away the shape of the base. the base is much larger. Back to the shadow. a little bit of my sunflower here, so I'll use that. We have serious circles here, so let's go on the first circle. Water 
so my brush is flowing nicely. So do you see how my shadow looks like it's on top of the leaves? I have to change that. So I'm going to get um, a little umber and I have to make sure that my leaf is on top of the shadow. this. So now it's dried up and I can use that at my advantage. another way. So they are not just facing or just going straight out. So now I'm kind of messing their hair. Okay, so let's go to the wall umber and just add a few streaks here and there. to the orange and the red. Let you see, and then I'm going to have a little bit of the center. More sideways brush strokes. Well, I'm going on top of this dark. It's going to be slightly transparent, so you're just adding, not completely covering it. Let's see. 
So we're going to add a little bit right here. But now the brush strokes want to create that fuzzy look. So I'm making brush strokes following the object um, that are a little bit elongated. So they're not dots, but they're almost like tiny little petals, if you say, but creating that fuzzy feel. There is our uh, version of a Van Gogh. Now he has highlights, so let's not forget those. And on our base, he has highlights right here and there. White. Also, he has highlights on this petal here. He has a highlight that's going on this leaf. And I'm gonna wipe my brush so it's not super loaded. And some highlights on this one. So right here. So highlights gonna end up on this petal right here. And some right there. We have some highlights on the top area. One. And again, they're tiny brush strokes. So it's like a fuzzy looking center. a little bit more on this, but we're going to leave it alone. Let's give a little bit of the aqua and put it into this green right here. Take a little more of the green and just work that area. and add a few brush strokes again. that's what's going to happen. I am going to take a break after I'm done painting and doing that video and I'm going to notice something that I'm going to want to touch up and make it obviously better. But I think for now we're going to stop right here and leave it alone. Um, I see a kind of 
like interesting like he was filling in areas like right around the petals making the probably better shade on this side with some green so I'm gonna just try to do the same thing and this one too cleaning up like we all do it color for your background if you were <laughs> yeah definitely use your brush use your color for your background kind of to fix it and this side is lighter so I'm going to get a little bit of light and not just fix this area but I'm gonna touch this up and oh it's likely upwards to not look like I fixed something Push strokes left and right, so we'll try not to be predictable. And let's leave it alone for now. And then I'll look at it and see what else we can change. Alright, so this is our Van Gogh, and I'll look at it for a little bit and see if I am completely satisfied with everything I see. And if I'm not, obviously, I'm gonna touch it up, but this is something that you should kind of try to practice, not try to do a painting in one sitting, but leave it alone, come back to it and see um, if it looks different or what looks different or what would you like to change. So there is our Van Gogh, three sunflowers. And we'll see you, um, we'll see you next week. Same place. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.